Well, welcome back. As we continue in Chapter 4, we are going to talk about some specific types of triangles, and they are called isosceles and equilateral triangles. We need to get a few definitions out of the way first. If we have an isosceles triangle, um, the sides of the angle that are congruent are called the legs. Um, the angle between those two legs is the vertex angle. And the two angles that are congruent form what's called the base. So the side that includes, that's common to the two angles that are congruent, is the base. And those angles are called the base angles then. And right away we're going to get a theorem and its converse. And the theorem says if you have a triangle where two sides are congruent in length, so we have AC is congruent to BC, then we know that the base angles are congruent. Angle A is congruent to angle B. Okay, that's the isosceles triangle theorem. Its converse says if you start off with the base angles being congruent, then that's going to mean the two sides or the two legs are also congruent. So if we take a look at the diagram that we're given in this problem, what theorem proves that side AB is congruent to side CB? Well, if we look at the diagram, we're given that the base angles are congruent, so we can conclude the sides are congruent by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, that's the converse one. The converse shows you the sides are congruent. The actual isosceles triangle theorem shows you that the angles are congruent. What theorem proves angle A is congruent to angle D, E, A? So what they're asking is what theorem shows us that this angle is congruent to this angle? Well, because of the diagram showing us that the two sides are congruent, that is actually just the isosceles triangle theorem. This one says, is angle WVS, WVS, is this little angle down here congruent to angle S? Well, yes it is. What theorem is that? That is because of, we know that the sides are congruent, so the angles, so that would be the isosceles triangle theorem, right? Um, is TR congruent to TS? Is TR congruent to TS? Well, now that we have this angle is congruent to this angle, our diagram also shows angle R was congruent to angle WVS. So if we know the base angles are equal, then we can conclude that the sides are equal. So is TR congruent to TS for the second part of that? Yes, it is. And that one is because of the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, can you conclude that triangle RUV, RUV is isosceles? Well, if it's isosceles, that means its base angles are equal or its sides are equal. So we already know that angle S and angle R are congruent. Um, we have angle WVS is congruent to angle URV. Is there any way to get these sides congruent? And we know that the big sides are congruent. We know these two little sides are congruent. But I don't think we have enough information to conclude that this little triangle is isosceles. Nothing is telling us um, that the sides are congruent and we just don't know if this angle right here is congruent to either this one or that one. So no, we cannot conclude that. Theorem 4.5 or 4-5 says if you have a line right here that bisects the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle then this line is going to be not only perpendicular to that base but it's also going to bisect the base. So it says that you'll have 90 degree angles and AD and BD will be congruent in length. So let's take a look at how we would use that in algebra. What is the value of angle X up here? Well they're telling us that triangle ABC is isosceles because of the markings and they're also telling us because these angles are congruent at the top that 
side BD is bisecting the vertex angle. So we know that angle A is congruent to angle C, which are both 54 degrees because it's an isosceles triangle. And we also know that BD is perpendicular to AC, so we know angle uh, ADB and CDB are both 90. So we should be able to figure out, since we have two small triangles, angle X is going to be the, um, 180 minus the sum of those other two angles, right? So if we took 54 plus 90 plus angle X, that has to add to 180. All triangles add to 180. All the angles of a triangle add to 180. That would leave us 36 degrees for angle X. Here's one for you to try. Go ahead and pause the video and I'll give you the answer when you come back. All right, I hope you gave that a try. So in this example, it's very similar to the last one. Okay, we know that angle A and angle C will be congruent, right? We also know that we have right angles for um, ADB and CDB. Those are both 90. And angle A is 27 degrees, so we know 27 plus 90 plus angle X has to give us 180. So if we just add these two together, what does that give us? 117 plus angle X equals 180. So subtract 117 from both sides. And those would cancel. And we get angle X is equal to, uh, what is that? We're going to borrow from the 8, make it a 7. So we'll get a 3, 6. So it looks like 63 degrees, right? Hopefully I did my math right on that. A corollary is a theorem that can easily be proved using another theorem. So here we have two corollaries um, using equilateral triangles. And these are easy to prove because they're very similar to what we have with our um, isosceles triangles. So the first corollary says that if all the sides are congruent, then all the angles are congruent. Okay. The second corollary says, well, if all the angles are congruent, then all the sides must be equal in length. So those are corollaries to our isosceles triangle theorem and its converse. So let's take a look at an example. It says, what are the measures of angle A, angle B, and angle A, D, C? Let me go ahead and mark those. I'm going to mark them in green so they are kind of different. We're looking for angle A, angle B, okay, and we know they'll be congruent, and then angle ADC, right there. We're looking to find what its measures are. Okay. So, first of all, um, if we let angle A be the measure of one angle, we know they're all congruent, right? So, three of these angles, angle A plus angle E plus angle D, must add to 180. So, three of them, and they're all the same. That gives us, each one must be 60 degrees. That's a good piece of information for you to remember. So all equilateral triangles have 60 degree angles. That will never change. So now we know angle A and angle B must be 60 degrees, right? They're congruent because they're all equilateral triangles. So all of them are 60. But now up here, so angle ADE is also 60 and angle CDE is also 60. So we can add those together to get 120 for the angle we were looking for. Okay. Here's one that's very similar. It says, suppose triangle, the triangles in, pro, in problem three on the last slide are isosceles triangles instead of equilateral. So I have the markings here that they're just isosceles but not equilateral. And they're telling us to measure of angle ADE, DEC, and ECB. Those are the three vertex angles are 58 degrees. If the vertex angles each have a measure of 58, what are the measures of angle A, I have a question mark there, and angle B, C, D? Okay? So I've labeled the vertex angles. We just need to find what the other angles are. Well, for angle A, let's take a look at that one first. We know that the measure of angle A, so angle A plus angle E, uh, I better label that better, Angle, we'll call it DEA, okay? DEA plus 58 must give us um, 180, right? 
But what else do we know about angle A and angle DEA? These two angles in an isosceles triangle are congruent, right? So I could really write this, angle DEA, as another angle A, right? So 2 times angle A plus 58 would give me 180. Well, what if I subtract 58 from both sides? So then I end up with 2 times angle A should equal, these add to 0, right? I can cross those off. It looks like 122. So now just divide both sides by 2. And I end up with angle A is equal to 61 degrees. Okay, so this one should be 61, which means um, all the base angles are 61, right? So that would give me 61 up here, 61 here, 61 here, 61 here, 61 here, right? So now if we want to find the measure of angle BCD, I'll do that one in blue. So that one is angle, let me make sure I have that right, BCD. So that one's going to be measure of angle BCD will be equal to 58 plus 61, right? So that should equal 119 degrees if you add those together. All right, here's a lesson check for you to work on and bring to class, and we'll see you next time.